have a random shape like this and this shape is placed on a fulcrum like this now this is the center where this shape is fixed on this fulcrum we are interested to find this point of that object from which the mass of the object is connected with the gravity things like this we, we, we want to actually balance something on this point so if you find the exact point which is the center of the mass of this this object this is the object this is a fulcrum and, and if you want to balance this thing on this this fulcrum you need to find that exact point in this object which is the center of the mass so if any object any shape now this is an object and I want to balance this object on this fulcrum then I need to find that point P which is actually the center of the mass of the object if this is the fulcrum and suppose this is we have a rod or things like this and from this point here this distance is d2 this whole distance from this point p to this point and this is suppose this is the let's suppose we have a rod and by the two ends of the rod we have connected some masses here one mass is here and one mass at this point so one mass is here i say this is mass mass 2 if, if the distance is d2 and one mass is here I say this is mass 1 and this distance is d1 and this distance is d2 now Archimedes said that if the multiplication of these two things equals to the multiplication of these two things then this rod having two masses whether they are same or not like m1 is not equal to m2 so in general what will happen if mass 2 is greater mass 1 is smaller then the the fulcrum will try to drop like this because mass 2 is greater or other case if mass 1 is greater then it will drop like this but if we can maintain the distance from this fulcrum then we can balance it whether the masses are same or not so if you need to balance this mass and these masses on the point and the masses are not same then you will change the distance you will move the object some position suppose i say that this final point is x1 this point and also this point is x2 so mass 1 is connected with the rod at the point x1 mass 2 is connected with the rod at the point x2 I say that this point P is the average point and I say this is x bar because I am moving from here to here okay suppose this is x1 this is x bar and this is x2 I am my initial point is this and I am moving from here to here now I was initially here I moved to with this point <coughs> then if I say that I traveled the distance d1 then what is d1 it is actually this point minus this point my final point minus initial point is actually d1 which is x bar minus x1 and now from this x bar I am moving further to the point x2 and now I am standing at the point x2 and I want to know the distance d2 then distance d2 is actually the final point now my initial point is x bar so this is my initial point this is my final point then distance d2 is actually x2 minus x bar so d2 is x2 minus x bar is it okay <clears throat> so now plug in these two values into the formula m1 d1 equals to m2 d2 means m1 
x bar minus x1 m2 x2 minus x bar <clears throat> multiply them together manipulate them and you will get m1 x bar <clears throat> plus m2 x bar equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 and from here I can take x bar as common so it is x bar m1 plus m2 equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 and this gives me x bar equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 whole divided by m1 plus m2 <clears throat> now look at this I initially I had two masses and this was the x bar and two masses m1 uh, m2 and m1 if I have so many masses up to m m1 m2 m3 up to mn then we can generalize this relation what does this relation says this relation says that x bar is actually m1 x1 plus m2 x2 means sum of the i from 1 to 2 mi xi i can write this as this when you put the value of i as 1 you will get this summation will give you plus i when you put the i equals to 2 you will get this so i have write, written this in the form of summation Similarly, this two thing means summation i from 1 to 2, m i. For i1, it is m1, summation gives you plus, i2, it is m2. So I simply wrote this equation like this. Now this is when you have two masses. If you have n number of masses, and you can write this x bar equals to summation i from 1 to n when 2 masses it was 2 when n masses it is n m i x i divided by summation i from 1 to n m i m i this one and one thing is summation Um, m i x i <clears throat> this summation m i x i is known as the capital M the moment of the system this is the tendency of the system the tendency of the object to rotate about this point P the tendency of the object to rotate at this point is given by this part of the whole formula and this thing summation mi is actually <coughs> the total mass then i can write x bar as this portion is capital m and the below portion is small m and this i can write as m equals to m x bar talking about the x axis then you can write it as m x and m x equals to summation i from 1 to n m i uh, y i so note the difference if this is m x then it will be y i so it is the tendency of the object to rotate about the x-axis similarly the tendency of the object to rotate about y-axis summation i from 1 to n 
एम आई एक्स आई इट इज मोमेंट एट द सेंटर ऑफ द मैस सो दिस मोमेंट इज डिनोटेड बाय द कैपिटल एम and this small m is for the total mass of the system total mass so small m is mass capital m is moment find the moment and center of mass of objects having masses the the thing is written in the in the notes m1 is 3 m2 is 4 M three is eight, <clears throat> and these these masses are connected at the points minus one and one, two and minus one, three and two. These are the points where these masses are connected with the rod. This mass is connected with this. This mass is connected at this point. These are the points. So <clears throat> the question is. find moment and center of the mass <clears throat> i have this data i know that moment along y axis is summation i from 1 to n M I X I. When there is a y, it will be x. Now, what is this? What is n here in this question? We have three points. So we have we have three n. So n is three. So I can write it as this formula as summation i from one to three because my n is three here. M I x i and if i open this summation here it will be m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 now you know in these points this is x1 this is y1 x y coordinate first point is x second is y this is x2 the second point is y2 this is x3 Y three. So from here I can pick up the values of x one, x two, and x three and put them here. I know the m one. M one is three. I know the x one. It is minus one. Plus m two, four. X two, two. Plus m three, eight. X three is three. If you sum up all together. it is 29 so my moment for the y axis is 29 since i have two points x y x y x y so i will calculate m x and m y now similarly to calculate m x i have the formula summation i from 1 to 3 my n is 3 m i this is x so this will be y and if you plug in the values it is m1 y1 m2 y2 and 3 y3 you know y1 y2 y3 m1 m2 m3 put them here multiply add up together and the final answer is 15 so i have calculated mx and my x is 15 and y is 29 We have calculated these. For the center of the mass, I had a formula like this: x bar equals to capital M over small m. It was like this. So I can write it as x bar equals to for the x-axis it will be m x over m, and for the y-axis it will be m y over m. these are the because x bar was actually the point where fulcrum was in connection with the object the total mass of the system was summation i from 1 to 
n m i it is summation i from 1 to n is 3 here so i from 1 to 3 m i it is m1 plus m2 plus m3 <coughs> if you add all these <laughs> masses together it is 15 <coughs> so i have got the value of m i already have mx calculated and y calculated so i can now calculate these two which are the center of the mass so my center of the mass equals to the the x point 29 by 15 and the y point 1 so this is the center of the mass at this point, if you connect the object with the fulcrum, it will stay in a balanced position, it will not fluctuate.